Hey everybody, welcome back to Plugin Tut, your home for handcrafted WordPress plugin tutorials. As always, I'm your host, Matt. And as always, if you enjoy videos like this, WordPress tutorials, how to's, even how to make money online, like we're gonna talk about today, go ahead and give this a thumbs up, share it with friends and family, subscribe to the channel if you like it. I've been doing a lot with easy digital downloads recently. If you've never heard of easy digital downloads, it's a great sort of plugin, or I even call it a platform for selling digital products like an ebook, music files, digital files, um, anything that's gonna be delivered digitally <laughs> and downloaded by your user. Hence the name, I've done a lot of sort of content on this channel and some recent content on PluginTut.com. Seven easy digital downloads add-ons um, to complete your platform and then how much does easy digital download store cost. And today, believe it or not, it has taken me, and let me tell you the reason why I've been doing a lot with EDD. It's because I just rolled out this new ebook. If you're interested in starting your own podcast for your own business or you know somebody who is, tell them to head over to thepodcastbook.com. And I co authored this with a channel friend of ours, Joe, uh, 85 pages, five chapters on how to start a podcast, grow an audience, uh, make some money, that kind of thing promote yourself, market yourself, and it's using easy digital downloads to sell and deliver the files. So I've done this video about five or six time, <clears throat> times. I'm actually losing my voice <laughs> because I've done so many takes on it because I couldn't quite figure out what to name it. And in today's video, we're calling this the five things that you should do immediately after you install easy digital downloads uh, for better conversion opportunity, for better uh, customer engagement and getting people to come back to your website. Let's take a look at an example. So in my incognito window here, this is just a, uh, a test site that I have set up with an easy digital downloads purchase right on the homepage to make it just a little bit easier for us. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to my cart and hit checkout. And the first thing I'm going to re recommend that we do is we get user registration enabled on the website. Here's why. Somebody comes to the site and they get it. They put the, the product in the cart. As you can see, here it is, no problem, easy peasy. They put in their email address and their name and they hit purchase. It's going to go and email them the file once it is, um, you know, once they have it, right? Once they actually completed the transaction, it'll send them an email. Now, I sell digital products and the number one support request I get is, where is my digital download that I just purchased? Um, people either get, you know, it gets caught up in their spam folder or they have too much email. They just, it just gets lost. Or what happens is they don't download it right away, which is another thing I'm going to tell you to change in a, in, a, in a moment, but they don't download it right away. And then the link expires and they, and they can't download it. And they didn't set up an account for the website to log into the website to download it. So let me just show you what that looks like. I'm going to move this window out of the way. And I'm going to go over to, uh, nope, sorry. I'm going to go over to miscellaneous. And then I'm going to go to checkout settings. And right here it says show register login form. You have a few options. Um, the one I'm going to set up is just the registration form only. You can have registration and login form. I guess it depends on what your business is. If it's a repeat customer, you could have that there um, if you want. But for right now, I'm just going to say registration only because I'm going to show you a different option for logging in in a moment. So let's go ahead and hit save. I'm going to bring that screen back. I'm going to hit refresh. And now you'll see right below the personal information is uh, the account information. Now, if somebody comes in, they create a username, they create a password, and then they purchase the product, and it's an optional, an optional thing. I've already done that with, uh, with another account, so let's just go ahead and just show you that real quick. So I'm going to go to, oh, actually, I'm not going to show you that because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what happens, uh, what happens after they log in. So there, there you have it. What we want to do is we want to turn on account creation uh, right at the start so that when they're checking out, they can create that account, which means they'll always be able to log in later and download that, uh, download the file or the files that somebody else um, that, 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 you, that they bought from you. So let's just take a look at a test real quick. So I'm going to say, Matt, let's test four. The next tip I'm going to say is, by default, uh, Easy Digital Downloads ships with support for uh, basic PayPal uh, account compatibility, right? So what does that mean? So they add it to the cart, they put in their username, or excuse me, they put in their name and email, and they hit purchase. We're going to skip that account creation. And here's what happens. You can see that the site is now processing me to go, let me make that full screen, sorry. Uh, 
processing means to send off to PayPal. And now I'm purchasing my that product through PayPal's website. So a few things at play here. If you if you're you know this is your first time in digital e-commerce space, number one, you're going off-site. So now I no longer see your website. If I've never seen pay, if I'm a customer of yours and I've never seen PayPal before, I might not know who they are. I might not trust them, um, and I might not even understand like what's going on. Why did I get redirected? Uh, maybe. Uh, when I was getting redirected, it, it timed out and I never, never even made it to the checkout page. Um, and some people just don't like PayPal. And what they don't realize is, is they can pay with um, a credit card with PayPal, but they immediately immediately think, oh, you know what? I'm not going, I, I don't have a PayPal account, so uh, I can't check out. So if they were to click create a PayPal account or click over here, they could switch to paying with uh, a PayPal account. They don't necessarily, you know, might not want to have to do it this way, um, but it certainly is an option. Um, so depending on your audience, depending on your product, redirecting to PayPal might be a problem with your with your conversions. A lot of people might not, might not want to use it. Uh, there is a certainly a case for cost. So what we'll do is I've already installed Stripe, the Stripe add-on, and that's what I mean by there is, you know, you certainly want to consider the cost. So the Stripe add-on is $89 from uh, Easy Digital Downloads, but when I, I've already installed it, I've activated it here. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my incognito screen back. I'm going to hit purchase, going to hit checkout, and now you'll see I have two options. I can go with PayPal like we just did, or I can take a credit card uh, right on the website. So you can see here, I can type in my credit card info, number, all that stuff, billing details, and I can purchase right here on the website. They don't leave, they don't get redirected. Um, you'll need an SSL certificate from your web host so that your, your uh, the transactions are, are secure. Um, but the idea here is they're not going off-site. They're not going to PayPal and sort of saying, gee, you know, I don't want to use PayPal. What is this thing I'm looking at? You want to have the best chance for converting. And that is probably the most important add-on that I would say you want to get right out uh, of the gate as soon as you can afford the uh, the ninety dollar add on fee. Uh, I can tell you that with our book, we don't have it yet because we haven't. Uh, we're we're just taking all the money that we have um, and sort of paying our initial costs with the book, and we are then going to go and buy the Stripe add on as soon as we have uh, enough in the bank for that purchase. All right. Next up, what I want to show you is after the pur after the purchase is made. Easy Digital Downloads isn't going to give you a, a method for the person to come back to the website and log in. So, you know, if, we, if this is our example site, there's no login links here. We have to go and put these login links so that our users, when they come back to the site looking for support or looking to download their files, they need a place to log in. So the first thing I'm going to show, oh, actually, <laughs> sorry, I know I'm all over the place with this because it literally took me about three hours to get this video out. The next thing I want to show you is the file downloads. This is the uh, this is the third thing that you should do. This is my third tip: is increase the download link expiration to something like seventy two hours. You know, the idea behind having an expiration link is that one person doesn't buy a product and then just share that link out with the entire world. Um, in fact, you can even uh, set a download limit if you wanted to. Um, but for me, uh, uh, expiration is good enough. So that e that link that goes out in the email, it only lasts for 72 hours. Uh, that way they're not sharing it and downloading it. That's the first thing I would do because sometimes from like a support issue, I'm going to go ahead and hit save changes. Like I said before, the biggest support issue I have is where's my file? And then the link is expired. Somebody buys something on like a Friday afternoon. They don't touch it until Monday morning or, or Monday afternoon. And the link is expired if it was set to 24 hours. Give them a chance, um, you know, but don't have it like this ridiculously long expiration date. Next thing we want to set up, where, which is what I was going for before, was getting somebody to log into your site. Again, by default, Easy Digital Downloads doesn't put a login anywhere on the site. You have to go ahead and do that yourself. And I want to show you a few different ways that you could do that. So if somebody actually registered on your uh, on your checkout page, if you turn that on, like I told you in step number one, um, the cheapest, fastest way for you to get people to log in is say, hey, go to my website and go to the standard WordPress login. Uh, very, very cheap sort of way to do things. There are some uh, login plugins that we can use to actually rebrand this, and that's kind of cool, but, uh, you know, really not wanting to give somebody that 
that master login uh, access, especially if you've changed that login link uh, for security purposes. So you can see right here under general and general settings, there's the login redirect page. So basically what this is saying is what happens when somebody logs in and where does it go? So what we want to do is switch it to purchase history. Uh, this is the default page or, you know, so long as you didn't change it from the default settings right here. This is the page that shows you, uh, well, all of your purchases, all the customers, all of their purchases. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save on that. Basically what this is saying, as soon as somebody logs in, it's going to get redirected there. The next step that you'll see is uh, Easy Digital Downloads does provide a short code and you can actually override that short code. So you could override this setting and actually type in, you know, redirect equals another uh, URL uh, if you want to have multiple logins in, in different areas. But you can grab this little short code. So I'm just going to grab this much right here. I'm going to copy that. And just for the, uh, well, actually, let me see here. For the sake of speed, I'm going to edit the home page. And I'm just going to drop in the EDD login right here on the home page. I'm going to bring my incognito window back. I'm going to refresh that. And now you see we have this uh, nice little login uh, box right here. It is a short code, which means you want to create a page, um, you know, for your login. So you could create another page called slash login. And the cool thing here is, is you could put out other content around your login. So, uh, you know, again, other, other content that supports the login, like, hey, check out the help desk. Don't forget to ask us a question. Um, you know, it automatically adds this lost password thing. If you have certain support hours, you might list those support hours there. So just some ideas. Uh, I'm going to keep providing a few ideas as we go along. So I've already created a user and let's log in and see what that looks like. Boom. You log in. Here's my purchase history page. Uh, you know, no WordPress dashboard because it's it's redirected me. And I can view downloads. I can view these downloads. I can see the time I purchased it, how much it was, and then I can download it by clicking this link right here. And, you know, having a place for somebody to log in so that when they do forget their... Um, you know, they, they forget where they put their email or they never got the email or whatever. Having that login is super important for them to access that file. What I would say that you'd want to do is use a plugin that's a little bit better than this sort of vanilla EDD uh, short code. So I'm going to go ahead and get that out of the way. I'm going to hit update. And I'm going to show you another plugin called... I can't see it because my mic is in the way. Uh, this video is going great. I really hope you uh, enjoy this. Oh, it's already active. Login with Ajax. So it's called Login with Ajax. And... You can do two things. You can use a short code like I just showed you, or you can add it to uh, a widget and add it to a sidebar. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save, bring back my incognito window and hit refresh. And then we see on the right hand side, there's my widget, username, password, remember me and lost your password. You can see that the styling isn't a hundred percent. It's adding like this uh, sort of border below that. <clears throat> My theme must be sort of overriding that or appending to that. So the cool thing is, is you can change the templates here and you can go to divs only, which is great for developers because it's going to strip out their styling. I'm going to refresh that and you'll notice it changes it to a very bare minimum. Um, so if you're a developer or a designer, you can come in and apply your own CSS to that. But another cool feature is this little modal pop-up. So I'm going to hit save on that. Bring this back, refresh again. And now it just uses it as a link, which means you could use this if you're using it in a short code form. Uh, you could use this within your content so it doesn't have this big box area. You just have this link. And when you click that, boom, it pulls up this nice little uh, modal window. You can still log in. And it, uh, and it sends me to, into, my, into my website. Now, you can see it didn't redirect me. Let's take a look at some of those options uh, with this plugin. So I'm going to go over to settings, log in with Ajax. <clears throat> and here's where you can set up all the global stuff. So uh, the global login redirect, the global log out. So you can do, not only can you do login, you can do a log out. So when somebody clicks on, again, bring this window back, they click on this log out link right here, it'll send them to a particular page. So this could be a thank you page. This could be a reminder page. You could be another product, like a product of the month. Like, don't forget to check this out kind of thing. So kind of cool there. So here's where you see all of the redirects that you can set up. Um, particularly for the login section here. So administrator, editor, author, 
everybody who buys a EDD product by default is labeled as a subscriber role. So here's where you would apply, you know, which page you want them to go to. So you would just, you know, put in whatever page, um, whatever page name that you want to set up. So that payment history, that kind of thing, which is important because if you have a site where you have, you know, editors or content, um, authors on your site, you don't want them all logging into this payment history page every time they log in because they're not buying your product. They're actually, you know, working for you. Here you could set up multiple redirects for multiple roles. So very powerful plugin, pretty, you know, lightweight for as much as it does. And it gives you some customization options. So that'd be the fourth thing that I would recommend is getting a login, you know, set up so that people can come back to the site easily and quickly log in, get the files that they need. And the last sort of tip right here, the fifth thing that I would do is really take advantage of your, um, let me log out so I can show you, really take advantage of your payment history page. And I know I don't have this set up to redirect, but let me go payment history. Purchase history, that's what it is. Um, really take advantage of your purchase history page. So if I go to pages, all pages, and purchase history, edit, you can, just because it, easy, easy Digital Downloads just gives you a short code to, um, you know, create and render that page that we just saw. Just, just short code is putting this out right there. But what you want to do is really say like, um, welcome to the store. Thanks for being a valued customer. You know, you could grab a, even a video, copy this link, put that in, whoops. You could put in a video, a sort of explainer video so people know what they're getting into. You could, you know, link out to another product. You could say, hey, product XYZ is on sale this month and really leverage the opportunity so that when somebody signs into their website for the first time, that they have some, uh, some deeper content to really understand the product, get some support tips, uh, you know, explain, you know, something else in more detail, that kind of thing. Uh, that's a really powerful thing. And I think it's often overlooked is, is really taking advantage of these pages because it's sort of protected content. Number one, it's not a full fledged membership. That's for sure. Uh, but it certainly gives you the capability to broadcast an additional message, uh, which might help sell another product, uh, down the line, depending on sort of what you're doing and what your business is all about. So again, those are the five things you need to do immediately after installing Easy Digital Downloads. Number one, it's getting user registration on the checkout page. Number two, when you can afford it, get the Stripe add-on so people are making transactions right on your website, you know, so long as you have SSL uh, with your web host. Um, change that file expiration from 24 hours to 72 hours, and then figure out where you're going to put in your login, uh, your login box. Again, I use the login with Ajax plugin, so you can create a quick little um, login section in your widget area. And then of course, add that content to your uh, account pages for upsell and just additional support content. It's plugintut.com, youtube.com slash plugintut. Thumbs up if you like this video. This was a tough one. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, it just really was tough for me to sort of stage it and formulate all the content. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hope you made it this far. Uh, thumbs up if you do subscribe, if you enjoy videos like this. I'll see you in the next video.